the message of the film, uh, Carpe Diem, right? Seize the day yeah. and get on your desk and yawp, you know, like that's uh, unbelievably yeah, I mean, what we're talking it, about, it about what, what, I mean, look, what happened. Those things when you start out young like that, it's like, you know, you get that break. And then the problem is, is you think, you know, now well, I'm 49 years old right now. You know, I've been in this business. I've been, that was my second movie. I've been acting professionally since I'm 15. And that was my first major role. And you working with Peter Weir and Robin Williams and all these other amazingly talented young actors, you know, and Ethan, someone who, you know, him and I are still remain friends and Dylan Cussman is another one who I consider a friend and, uh, and Jamie Waterston, all these great people and Robert Sean Leonard and all these talented Gail Hansen and Al Ruggiero and just great guys. And we bonded in the Radisson and Wilmington, Delaware and going to the mall and playing video games and, <laughs> And working with Peter Weir, who is this exceptional, extraordinary talent. So you, you tend to think as a kid, like, oh, my God, they're all going to be like this. This is what the movie industry is like. And it's not. It was a, it was a, it was a special movie, I think, made even more special by, by Robin and his infectious spirit and his talent and what he brought to it and that he brought so many people into that movie. And also by Peter, who was really the sort of, you know, the keating of the film, you know, inspiring us all, playing music for us. You know, when you... I would tell people if you watch that movie, you know, it's, it's uh, Peter used to play music a lot. It was really, and it's something that I stayed with, you know, as an actor my whole career since, just in order to sort of get into a moment of the scene or the tone or the feeling of, of what you want. And I remember when we shot the final scene where we all stand up on our desks, he would play all these music, this music, and, and he did, he had like a boombox you know what i mean it was like terrible <laughs> and my dad because i grew up in baltimore which wasn't very far my dad was a commercial director and had a really cool like new bose boombox that was like giant and sounded great and he brought it to the set for peter and so when we when we filmed that scene he was playing uh maurice shards uh jars music from the mission you know that beautiful soundtrack from the mission and so uh no, no, I'm sorry. It, he was playing, uh, I think it's Morricone did the, the music for the mission. Mm -hmm. my, my, my apologies. And your Morricone soundtrack for the mission. But he was playing that while we were all performing that. And if you listen to that soundtrack, uh, it might be fun for people who are fans of the movie to watch it and think. And then Marie Chiar, who ended up doing the music for Dead Poets Society, you know, created his own version of that. But that's a memory that I'll always stay with, just that, that boombox that my dad brought just blaring through and we're all standing up and just feeling it. And, um, he was, you know, he was an incredible, uh, person to work with as a young actor. And I remember he also did something in the original script of the film and Tom Schulman won an Oscar for the movie, by the way, it was, a, it was the one Oscar that I think the movie won. It was nominated for a couple, but he, he won. But in the original screenplay, um, you find out at the end of the movie that, that Robin's character had, had, uh, was dying. I think it was cancer. I don't remember. But but like if you think about the film now, it's like all the stuff with Neil and and, 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 and the, the climax of that. And then at the end, it's all coming down on Keaton and you find out that he is dying. And that's why he's so carpe diem and sees the day. And don't mm. you get it? Don't you see? And when Peter Weir came on the film, it was one of the first things he said, this is going away. Right. You know? And and Tom Schulman will tell you this. He was, you know like he was stunned and upset and like couldn't believe what he was hearing. And now I think he thanks his lucky stars because it was a great, just a great sign of a director, like reading the, the, the tone of the film and, 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 and the meaning of the film. Right. And somehow if you sort of, you know, explain it away, like, you know, the reason he is this way is because he's dying as opposed to this is just his spirit. And this is what he's bringing to you. Uh, was much more, I think, profound and less sentimental, you know, and and, and just better. Just um, and and uh, it's one of those things where you read, you'd never think of it any other way, and then when it's gone, you're like, how was that ever in there? You know, this makes so much more sense. It makes so much more, um, much more nuanced and interesting. So, great experience uh, filming in in St. Andrews School in Delaware. Um, and and like I said, it was pretty close to my home, so I could I could go home on weekends and hang. Oh, Although I was so that? jacked up and excited, I was usually staying in the Radisson. Pretending <laughs> I was twenty seven as opposed to seventeen. I love it. Um, I love it, Josh. <laughs> hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.